is going to add for the next few decades 75 million people a year 100 more people every 42 seconds what should we try to do to be competitive in the 21st century in one year there'll be 7 billion people on this planet most of them want your job you know and that keeps me awake at night you know there's someone in india it's always india in my dreams you know <laughs> who is studying and wants to be an international finance professor at emory and have the life i do and if i'm not honing my skill they deserve to have it prior to teaching at emory university dr rosenzweig was a professor at yale school of management he attended yale for both his bachelor's and master's degrees in economics quoted in the National Business Press, including Forbes, Fortune, and Business Week. He has appeared nationally on ABC World News Tonight and Good Morning America, NBC's Today Show, NBC Nightly News and Nightline, Bloomberg TV, and he's a frequent economic commentator for CNN. Let's say you were running your business, or you're thinking of starting a business. Most businesses are started in this country by women, for instance. If they are only hearing how bad things are going to get, yeah. why would they start a business? Well, and is there any good news for the future of the U.S. through demographics, through finance, through our trade situation? The bottom line, what, what I did is I said, however many jobs are in these various major industries in 2000, call it 100, and then let's trace how many there are in those industries right up to the present month. The reason you started at 100, it's easy to see percent changes. Manufacturing, the bottom line, the red, is at something like 68. In other words, we only have 68% as many jobs. We've lost 32% of the total jobs in manufacturing in a decade when the country's population rose 26 million people. The agenda is mostly to talk about the job market, not in and of itself in a very micro sense. You know more about that than I do, but how the global economy impacts the U.S. economy, how does that affect the job market going forward? Can we remain uh, if not the superpower, at least a leading superpower. Is it a good time for the U.S. Uh, franchisors to expand? And can that significantly contribute to the U.S. economy? 70 million people a year over the next 20 years, 97% of them out in the emerging markets. But this is why I'm bullish about commodities and stocks that can participate, companies that can participate in global growth. The world's fastest growing economies are also the most populous. So think how that is changing consumer markets and, and the face of business. When you have billions of people literally entering a lower middle class and then hopefully ultimately a middle class um, because of the most populous nations, and this isn't just a one year thing. In the case of China, this has been going on for 30 years. India for 20 years, rapid economic growth. These are the emerging markets, as we call them in finance. These are the advanced nations. And it just so happens that last year, the year before, and projected, every emerging market uh, economy will grow faster than all the advanced economies. We were in, or in royalties in these foreign currencies. The word is translate. They translate into many more U.S. dollars. As these foreign currencies hit record highs, they can borrow, buy more U.S. dollars. You know the U.S. has a $500 million trade deficit? We buy so much and as oil price goes up, it could be bigger. Well, what are the things we're good at? International law, international education. 40% of my MBA students come from all over the world and they pay tuition. But royalties is actually a major contributor to our U.S. international balance of payments. Well, what about the credit markets? I mean, are, are we starting to see them fall at all? They are thawing. The interest rate now that banks lend to each other has come down dramatically. Right. And if they'll lend to each other, they'll get money when they need some. Let's say they have some uh, big borrowers who need some money. That is the first sign of thawing. It is true that the Federal Reserve has done a good job of throwing enough money into the banking system to get it to thaw. The jobs of the future are in health care and in education. You might have realized it's in healthcare. You might think we didn't have to bring a professor for that. Because with the aging of the baby boom, so many of us need more uh, physical therapy, more time in the hospital, more nursing care. I'm an example of that. I was a basketball player. 
Uh, none of my students can pronounce Rosenzweig, so I asked them to call me Dr. J. Um, <laughs> for Jeff, you know. Of something of particular concern to me is gender equity. Firms have to think about, I believe, the life cycle of, for instance, a woman. Does she have the same opportunity? Does she have the same expectations placed upon her as a man uh, who maybe enters a firm? Um, and does she have enough role models? We've had more babies born in the last three years in the U.S. than any three years, except for the very peak of the baby boom. Who's going to educate them? Who's going to teach pre-K and nurseries? Who's going to form nursery schools? Maybe you can do that in child care and become an entrepreneur. Who's going to teach elementary school? We need a whole new generation of teachers. So the top lines are education and health care. And think about aligning yourselves with that.